The next item of business is the final stage of the Rates Amendment Bill. I call the Minister of Finance and Personnel to move the final stage and open the debate on the bill. Thank you, Mr Deputy Principal Speaker, and I beg to move that the Rates Amendment Bill uh, do now pass. Mr Deputy Principal Speaker, before providing members with a recap of the content of the bill in its final form, I would like to briefly take the opportunity to thank members for the support that has been shown for the passage of the bill through the Assembly and also to the Finance and Personnel Committee uh, for all the work that has been undertaken to date. I look forward to continuing that uh, working relationship and I think yet again we have an example of a piece of legislation which has come through this House where there is good practice in relation to the relationship both between uh, the committee which has a statutory responsibility to scrutinise legislation and also the members of this House that have a duty to ensure that they are content with the legislation that is being brought forward. As I have already alluded to in earlier debates on this bill, uh, I, along with many other members in the House, would have preferred that it had been possible for this bill to be, have been progressed by normal means. However, Mr Deputy Principal Speaker, factors outside my department's control have contributed to the need for accelerated passage, and I thank the members for the efficiency with which they have conducted affairs at this busy time for the House. As I have already explained during previous debates, and as members will be aware from their consideration, the bill is short, and I trust this has facilitated members' consideration. I see this bill as a conclusion of a series of fundamental changes taken forward in the rating system since devolution was re-established. I think the House can be proud of its work Rating Matters, which has seen the delivery of an executive review of rating, which implemented a series of critical measures between 2008 and 2010. The implementation of intervention measures during the economic downturn, non-domestic re-evaluation, and adjustments to respond to the reorganisation of local government. The non-domestic review will ensure that the new executive in the next mandate continues this work with a renewed evidence base, which I think, Mr Deputy Principal Speaker, is vitally important. Turning to the detail of the bill itself, which makes some final adjustments in respect of commercial rating. Firstly, the sport and recreation provision, which I have already mentioned. By amending Article 31, Sports and Recreation Exemption within the Rates Northern Ireland Order 1977, the final version of the bill provides a power for the Department to provide full rate relief for many sports clubs subject to conditions. The conditions I have in mind are that the club in question should be on licence and registered as a community amateur sports club. Following the outcome of further consultation, I will set these out in regulations subject to affirmative resolution control by the Assembly. And I think, again, that is an assurance and an issue that has been raised uh, that it will be an issue which will be brought to this Assembly. This approach recognises the competition issues which have already been raised uh, with my department and the Finance Committee by the hospitality sector. And I know this does not satisfy everyone in this House and that many sports clubs with uh, bars feel that they are disadvantaged by this measure. I think we also need to be mindful of business interests when we take forward policy in this particular area. Aside from this being the right thing to do, I also need to protect the Department from the risk of challenge should we wish to adopt a more lenient policy. Having said that, I know that there are community amateur sports clubs that operate a small bar and that serve their members by visiting uh, teams after a match. And I'm sure that my successor will be happy to review that issue at a later stage. I do not think, Mr Deputy Principal Speaker, therefore, that there is a way that we can develop a balanced, sound, effective and working policy to allow some clubs with powers to get 100 per cent rating relief and for the regulations to be taken through the Assembly by September and have noted this in my comments at a further consideration stage. Policy may well develop in this area over the next mandate, informed by the ongoing review of the rating policy. There is one other point that I would uh, like to make about 
rating relief for sports clubs, and that concerns the amendment carried yesterday, which at a stroke extends the list of prescribed sports to pigeon racing, which I know uh, almost had us all in flight yesterday in relation to this issue. However, there are reasons or there are lessons, I think, to be learned from the short but eventful journey of this bill to do with due process in policy making. One in starting to, is starting to discern that members are not applying the same standards to legislation in the form of a private member's bill and tabled amendments that they would require of a government department. I feel it leads to poor policy and members need to remember that rates revenue pays for vital public services. There is an on effect where that revenue is reduced and some standards that need to be brought to bear in taxation policy. My party took the exceptional step of opposing the private member's bill with a petition of concern during its passage through the Assembly. This was on the grounds that proper consultation had not taken place and that there was an alternative and more appropriate legislative vehicle available for changing policy. However, in relation to the pigeon racing amendment, on the face of it, probably and no doubt a worthy measure, but this could and should have been subject to consultation and taken forward through a change in the regulations containing the list of prescribed sporting activities not passed as part of this piece of primary legislation. Everyone outside my party voted for the amendment because no one, of course, wants to appear to be against it. It is also too easy, Mr Deputy Principal Speaker, forgive me for saying it, but that's not the way that we should be making laws. And I think we need to just reflect on what has happened. However, as the saying is, we are where we are. The second policy contained within clause two of the bill came as a result of a suggestion from the business community, and thankfully this amendment has proved a lot less problematic. This provision will ensure that where shop fronts or shop window displays are used in empty retail premises, the shop owner will effectively continue to receive 50% empty property relief. This measure is novel and unique to Northern Ireland, and for this reason it is time-bound within the primary legislation but can be easily extended if the policy proves successful. And I thank members, in particular it was mentioned by uh, Ms Hanna, who recognised the innovative nature of this measure, which builds on other positive policies delivering during this mandate, such as the empty shops rate concession. In summary, Mr Deputy Principal Speaker, this is a short bill that helps amateur sports clubs and shopping areas by prov providing uh, further rates concessions and I'm looking forward to members' support in ensuring the bill clears its final assembly stage. I commend the bill to the House. I call the chairperson of the Committee for Finance and Personnel, Mr. Duffy Mackay. Graham, I'm going to brief last can clear. Uh, if I can, uh, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, I want to make some personal comments and comments from a party perspective uh, before speaking on behalf of the committee. I first uh, undertook to introduce legislation to reduce the rates burden uh, on amateur sports clubs some three years ago. Uh, and the end result today, or certainly after the regulations are introduced, uh, some three years on and some two bills later, uh, is indeed a better deal for amateur sports clubs. I wouldn't say it's a fair deal, uh, but it is a better deal, and I welcome the fact that we will see the new regulations in place uh, in the coming months. Uh, community and amateur sports clubs without bars will benefit uh, to the tune of a maximum of £750,000, and that will cover pitches, club rooms, storage facilities, and sport club stands. And the clarity provided uh, uh, by Brian McClure on that is very welcome, uh, as from the consultation that I carried out uh, for the private members bill, there is a lot of uh, confusion out there uh, amongst clubs as to what is rated and what is not rated and, and what relief uh, is applied in, 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 the, in the present system. Uh, so that clarity is, is very much to be welcomed. So I look forward to the targeted consultation that will now take place uh, in the coming weeks regarding amateur sport club rates. And I uh, indeed welcome the commitment from the Minister uh, and the Department to review the issue of those clubs running a small bar to serve a few pints, operating on a much, much smaller scale uh, than some of the cases that were highlighted to the Finance Committee 
uh, by pubs of Ulster. And again, I would like to thank the Minister for his cooperation uh, with myself in, in recent weeks in regard to the passage of this bill. Just in terms of the, the committee perspective, I believe that's kind of I welcome the opportunity uh, to briefly reflect on the work of the committee in relation to the bill. Uh, admittedly, because of the absence of the committee stage, this scrutiny has been fairly cursory in nature. Uh, nonetheless, I believe that the work of the committee prior to the introduction of the bill has facilitated stakeholders in airing some key issues for consideration. Uh, this is especially so in terms of the evidence sessions with the sporting bodies and hospitality sector in relation to revisions in Clause 1. This work has, in turn, uh, helped to inform the subsequent passage uh, of the bill through the House. While I, whilst ideally a committee stage would have enabled some of the policy issues to be bottomed out, at this point the Finance Committee recognised the merit of ensuring the passage of the bill is completed before the end of mandate. With that in mind, and having received the necessary assurances from the previous Minister, the Committee gave its unanimous support to accelerated uh, passage. Turning specifically to the envisaged regulations under Clause 1 to provide enhanced rate relief to prescribed sports clubs. Uh, I welcome the enabling power in the bill and believe this will result uh, in tangible benefits for the wider community. Uh, given the complexities around the issues to be considered in terms of the scope of the enhanced relief, I believe that it will be important uh, for the various stakeholders to input to the forthcoming consultation on the regulations. And there will also be a need uh, for the successor finance committee to actively engage in this process uh, with a view to helping inform and influence the development of the regulations which will flow from Clause 1. In terms of the provisions under what is now Clause 3, uh, to apply a disregard to the commercial use of window displays, uh, again the Committee sees this as a positive and innovative initiative uh, given the challenges facing the commercial uh, sector. Uh, in more general terms, I believe that as a devolved assembly, we must continue to look for innovative measures that can help support and nurture businesses in and around our towns. Uh, I therefore welcome the review of the non-domestic rating system and I look forward to the outputs uh, from this and how these will translate into concrete proposals that will benefit the wider economy. In so doing, we will of course need to ensure that the revenue raising potential uh, of the rating system is utilised judiciously for the benefit of the public. <coughs> in terms of the, the new, new Clause 2 uh, in regard to pigeon racing. Uh, this is something that has not been considered by the committee and the committee has not a view on, but can I take the opportunity to congratulate uh, Mr Cree and Mr Swan uh, on what's turned out to be a bit of a coup uh, in terms of this particular uh, amendment. So to conclude, uh, I pray last can Coyer. On behalf of the committee, I support the bill. I call Mr Ian McRae. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. Um, I think, certainly in respect of this bill um, and the work of the, the committee, and alongside with the minister and his officials, if nothing else, has certainly been evidence that where um, people are of a, a similar mind, we can obviously get business done and deliver something that can be of the benefit to our community. I think certainly in respect of the um, amateur sports clubs, a lot of debate has happened around this and a lot of discussions, both with the sector um, and um, with officials and, and whatnot within the committee. And I think that um, whilst the um, chair doesn't believe it to be a fair deal, I think it is um, whenever it's realised and whenever it's put into practice. The benefits that the community and amateur sports clubs will see as a result of this change of, of legislation is something that I think will, will be welcomed. Um, I think um, in, in sort of carrying on from the member's fi final remarks, um, yesterday we did get a lesson on pigeon ra racing. I've learned things that I've never known before. Um, I learned that um, pigeons um, are now used as a, a means of dealing with the gang culture in America, um, and if that is the case, you know, uh, 
you know, uh, it's something certainly I have no doubt that um, we, we, we can, which we maybe don't have the gang culture that they have in some parts of America, um, who knows what this will do for the future of pigeon racing in Northern Ireland and, and the benefits that it will have to um, criminal gangs and, and what not, and maybe we'll see them all go out of business. Uh, maybe they should have introduced this quite some time ago when we wouldn't have had the um, struggle um, here in Northern Ireland um, over the last 40 years. But nonetheless, um, uh, we'll maybe see a pilot of that happening some, some stage soon um, here in Northern Ireland and hopefully deal with, with the culture of, of crime and, and whatnot that, that we have. Um, but certainly, I think, in respect of, of the um, community amateur sports side of things, I think it is um, to be welcomed. In respect of the, um, the window displays and the 50% rate relief, I think this is a, a good news story that this assembly um, will send out today. That whilst it's not the answer, and I think it was um, Claire Hanna who, who mentioned it in, in a previous debate, you know, we shouldn't you know, want to be doing this type of measure. We should be doing um, the, the work in the sense of trying to ensure that our shops are filled and we don't need to provide this kind of rate relief for, for empty shops. But I, I think it's something in respect of trying to show the, the business community who have struggled over the last number of years that this assembly is listening and will do what it can where possible, obviously under the constraints that it has financially, to help that community, and I think that this certainly is, is something that will be welcome across our town centres. And as someone who um, has, for, for a number of years, been on a on a on Cookstown District Council, um, where we successfully uh, marketed our town as Cookstown, looking good, looking great, and I think that's something that even this uh, piece of legislation will bring more benefits to um, even that um, strategy of um, the looking good, looking great, where the sh empty shops and whatnot, whereas at least if there's some form of advertising um, on the windows and they're receiving the 50% the uh, rate relief, is certainly something that no doubt will help. So all in all, I commend the Minister for bringing this um, through this um, House. I know it was something that he had very little to do with the early stages of, but certainly had plenty to do with it as it went through. Um, but all in all, a good piece of legislation, and I think that people will see the real benefits as soon as it's introduced. Thank you. Call Mr. Jared Diver. Thank you very much, Mr. Principal uh, Deputy Speaker. And I very much welcome the opportunity to make a contribution to this debate on the final stage of the Rates Amendments Bill. Uh, as already has been outlined, there are two substantive clauses in the bill, and the SCLP is supportive of the bill in general. My colleague Claire Hanna made a significant contribution to the debate on this, and she obviously referenced uh, the, the, the use of accelerated passage here. We are content uh, with the use of accelerated passage in this case, but I have to state the fact that we would urge caution in the use of that mechanism generally, as in our considered view, it doesn't give the level of scrutiny that perhaps we should be aiming for. Uh, in this House. Uh, the bill has two clauses, um, had two clauses when it was int int introduced, and obviously we have the addition of 1A yesterday uh, to include the pigeon racing, and we flocked to support that when it was being voted on. So uh, perhaps we'll all end up being ornithologists or amateur ornithologists after this. So the first clause within the, the bill provides for a power to enhance rates relief for community amateur sports clubs. This is obviously subject to criteria that will be uh, prescribed in subordinate legislation and subject to affirmative resolution, resolution of the Assembly. The second clause enables commercial window displays to be disregarded from occupation for rating purposes. And as we've heard through the committee stage, this clause was mainly uh, proposed from the, the business sector. And I would agree with the comments uh, of other speakers that this shows that the Assembly is responsive to the needs of the business community and that the Department has made some efforts in that regard. The measure is untried. Uh, my understanding is that it's untried anywhere else in the UK at this stage. 
and is time bound in the new clause to the end of the 31st of March 2017 with the potential to extend it further. So we obviously hope it will be successful in that regard. The law on rates as it stands already uh, actually provides for 80% relief in the case of charitable purposes and this bill uh, proposes to extend this to community and sporting clubs and we welcome that. Uh, we know that there's been a private member's bill brought forward during this uh, mandate, Mr. Principal, Deputy Speaker, uh, the thrust of which was that community and sporting clubs should have 100% rates relief. The SDLP supported both the principles of that bill and the proposals contained within the bill are considered here today also. Uh, the hospitality sector raised competition issues with the uh, proposals within the private member's bill. These concerns were over the fact that any proposal to enhance sport and recreation relief to 100% could have the effect of placing licensed sporting clubs, those with an alcohol license in particular, at a very uh, advantageous position. And the train of thought was that this advantageous position would have a large effect on the other businesses working within that sector. Uh, those concerns were outlined to the committee on a number of occasions. Um, the issues over the sale of alcohol and profitability uh, should not be, the, be an actual barrier to the uh, progression of relief. And it is for this reason that we supported the Sinn Féin amendments, both at consideration and further consideration stage. As was referenced during the second stage debate on the bill, in England and Wales, registered community amateur sports clubs receive 80% relief on the rates for premises that are wholly or mainly used for the purposes of that club. In Scotland, mandatory rates relief is given to registered charities and registered uh, community and sports clubs where the premises are wholly or mainly for charitable or club purposes. It is right and proper that we too extend rates relief and I welcome the fact that this legislation has reached the final stage today. In reference to Clause 2 of the Bill, it is a good idea that we will help our owners plagued by vacancy. Uh, this measure will not regenerate the local economy with sweeping effect. It is, however, a small part of the range of measures that we need to bring forward in this House uh, that will, that will uh, need to adopt to help our businesses. Uh, may, many of which are struggling at this very, very difficult time with the state of the economy. Vacancy rates are still uh, much too high and profitability rates too low. Mr. Principal, uh, Deputy Speaker, the SDLP has been supportive of this piece of legislation since it was introduced into the House. It will provide good relief and assistance to organisations whose purpose is not financially driven. Uh, the outstanding issues around the sale of alcohol and profitability, I hope, will be resolved in the coming mandate. Thank you. Call Mr. Leslie Cree. Thank you very much, Mr. Principal, Deputy Speaker. At this stage, really, everything has been said, but uh, I was very pleased to be able to help uh, Mr. McRae with his knowledge of things, you know, in the uh, in the West, and uh, he certainly needs to get out more. But again, I'll help any any time that I can. Um, it is a good example, actually, where democracy works. So there are problems with accelerated passage, but I think we've demonstrated that democracy, despite what some people may think, is still alive and well <laughs> in this house. Um, the chairman covered the point, really, all of the points in, in, in depth. Uh, it has been a good example where a committee has worked with the department and produced, you know, a good result from both ends of it, and I hope that that will continue. Uh, so we're quite happy uh, to support the, the bill as amended and um, thank the Minister again for the undertaking he's given us here this afternoon. Thank you. call the Minister of Finance and Personnel, Mr Mervyn Storey, to conclude on the bill. Final stage. Uh, thank you, Mr Deputy Principal Speaker, and can I thank those members who have made a contribution to uh, the bill this afternoon. I just want to make a number of very brief comments, and I, I want to touch on the point that was made by Mr. Diver, and, and obviously he has made a point in relation to the concern of using accelerated passage because there wasn't the opportunity for the House to give due uh, process in terms of scrutiny. However, he and his colleagues then uh, yesterday went through the, the lobbies to vote for an amendment which there had been no consultation on, there had been no due consideration of, and even the chair in his comments said that uh, he wasn't going to make any uh, comment in relation to the issue, which brings us back to the uh, issue of pigeons, which were uh, much to the fore. I have to say I did smile when I, I noticed that uh, today Northern Ireland ranks as the happiest place in the United Kingdom as a result of, of a new survey, uh, and uh, the top of the morning feeling 
uh, Peaks and Fermanagh and Oma. Now, that has nothing to do, I think, with the fact that we have passed legislation uh, or will pass legislation in this House today in relation to pigeon clubs. However, I do think it might have more to do with the fact that we have a First Minister who is now from Fermanagh, and I'm glad that that has brought happiness to the people of Northern Ireland. Uh, Mr. Deputy Principal Speaker, in closing, uh, I want to take time just to thank the Speaker's Office, the Bill Office, as well as the Assembly staff and all who have done so much to facilitate the passage of the Bill. I also want to note and place on, uh, on record our thanks to the Office of Legislative Council and the staff within the Legislative Programme Secretariat in OFMDFM for their work in supporting my department through the passage of the Bill. I also want to thank my own officials who have worked tirelessly both in terms of the preparation of uh, the, the Bill and also in the extensive deliberations that they had with the committee and I think I want to ensure that they uh, are thanked for the work that they have done and also to the work again of the finance and personnel committee and I think the point that Mr Cree makes is a valid point it is an example with its deficiencies however that uh, there are bills that can come forward in this house there can be an agreement and we can find a solution even when there are difficulties so I want to conclude by thanking all who have been involved in this uh, process. I uh, thank everybody who has helped us to bring the bill today to this stage, and I now commend the bill to the House. Members, that the, the bill requires cross-community support at final stage. The question is that the rates amendment bill do now pass. All those in favour say aye. aye. Contrary, no. The ayes have it. The ayes have it. As there are ayes from all sides of the House and there are no dissenting voices, I am satisfied that cross-community support has been demonstrated. The rates, bill, the rates amendment bill has passed.